damn it. That was not good. I just lost everything. Welcome to Gaming with a Scottish Accent. I'm Del Danto and this Steve Jackson's Sorcery. How are we doing guys? I don't know if you can click on this again. Can you click? No you can't. Okay, we need to approach the gate then. It, okay, you reach the foot of the mighty gate. It is sealed. Sergeant places one hand on the wood. The gate has been locked for some time to deter raiders, he tells you. But you will have no difficulty. The stair in this place allows a DOP spell to be crafted. And he stands back. Okay, cast a spell. Oh. Okay. Tap the letters to find a spell. Okay, so we need to do D-O-Z. Ah, uh, don't have a Z. The DOP? DOP, okay. That's quite a cool wee spells. Right, search the foot of the mighty gate, let's see, we've done that bit. Weave the spell, one by one, the great tumblers of the door begin to creak and groan. Then the hinges turn, with a noise like hail on a canvas roof. These gates have not opened since our last champion was lost, the sergeant says. I wish you more luck than he. Perhaps you will even meet him on your travels. Okay. Hmm. I'll go for that. I will overtake him then. Perhaps he is too slow. <laughs> the sight master nods, peering at something on the horizon. I believe he is returning, but transformed. I hope you do not meet the same fate. He stands back from you. Okay. That was quite a cool wee, uh, wee spell thing. Wee spell interface. That was pretty smart. Okay, guys. Uh, before we go further, I just want to say thanks for the the support I got in the last episode. It's, you seem to have... Well, I've got, I've got a few views on it now and you seem to have liked it. So I'm going to keep going with this series. Please keep commenting. And if you do like it, remember and uh, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. But let's keep going. Uh, together, you step into the shadows of the wall. One last word he declares. When you have the crown, find the highest point you can find. We will be watching. What do you mean watching? Watching for where? From here? The City Master Warriors are selected from birth for their incredible powers of telescopic vision. Ah. You cannot help but wonder how far he can see. I'll, I don't know what came up lies ahead. I'll find out enough. Enough talking. It's time to go. Without another word, you pass through the gate. The faces of the folk watching you depart reveal the hopes that rest on your quest. The early morning air is crisp and the rising sun paints the, sco the slopes in shades of peaceful beauty, concealing the evil that lies ahead. Okay, here we go. So now we need to go into Kakabad. Kakabad. Right, okay. The path winds through slopes of wind scrubland. The countryside is deserted and the eerie silence is broken only by the cawing of the occasional crow. There is a spell for hearing what they say, but you do not have the equipment it requires. The birds appear to pause in the air, examine you as they pass. They make you uneasy. As if you were an intruder in their presence. I keep walking, I love this. This is like, it just reminds me of my childhood when you're playing the, reading the books. Like, do you do this or that? I've done it page 40. <laughs> Anyway, barely an hour beyond the wall, when the air begins to grow foul, the Shamutante, the Shamutante hills are infested with the, p the pestilence of the backlands. It saps the energy from the body, leaving you feeling nauseous and weak. This is a Scotsman's worst nightmare though, a book. <laughs> you have to read with big words, it's just, it's not the best thing for a mumbler. <laughs> anyway. I just keep walking, I'm, I'm tough, I'm hard as nails. It's not a surprise, they warned you of this. You will grow accustomed to it the longer you're out here. But for the moment, you must be very careful. Okay, your maximum stamina just decreased. Oh no, you can see your stamina on the top screen, it reaches zero, you'll be too tired to carry on. Stamina can be regained up to the maximum by eating, rations or resting. Okay. Right, we've got a low rise and we've got... So I think we have to pick where we want to go now. We can either go travel cross country or we can go to the low rise. Let's go for the cross country. 
Okay. The path through Cantopane is long and winding. And will lose you a day. Instead, you turn off the path and strike north through the green high grass. Knee high grass? Green high grass? The journey starts with a stiff climb and takes several hours. But from the top, you have a good view of the plain of yellow grass. And just to the north of that, a little village of rude huts that do not look like human dwellings. To your left, the gigantic wall looms throwing shadows that lap at your feet. Look back at the wall, or can we strike forwards? Time to strike on then. The wind whispers through the long grass, beckoning you onwards. But there might be rats on worse than those fields. You might be safe for cutting across the river and following the bank. Um, can you zoom out in this map? Yeah, you can. Okay, where are we actually heading? I don't know where we're actually, where the destination is that we're supposed to be going. I think we're heading up for the Shamani Hills, but let's just go back in and go for the longer grass. Okay, you wade through the shimmering grass, which gets longer and longer until you first your boots and then your scabard are lost from your view. Still, with Cantopani disappearing over the brow of the hill, you are making excellent time. Suddenly you freeze up. You freeze, sorry. Up ahead, the grass is parting and coils and bends. The parting is moving. There's something there that's coming for you. Let's stand my ground. Whatever it is, you will find it ready. You wait as the switch blading furrow moves closer. Cast a spell. <laughs> I'm going to spell it. What do we need? Right, what do we want to cast? I should really check my spells. Let's go for an S. U. Okay. S U S. Sense danger. No, we don't want to do that. Can we go back out here? Can we check our spell book while we are here? I think we can if we go. Yep. Yeah. So spell book. What do we want to cast? Zap. I think we're going to go for zap. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Let's go for zap. So we go back. To get back to the story, just click on your character. Uh, cast a spell. Let's go for zap. It may be something friendly, but I am not taking the chance. Do we have a Z? Here we go. Z. O. Where are the A's? I need an A here. A. There's an A. Crap, just happened. I need an A. A. Can we not take an A? Oh, hey. Why are you there? Let's go back to the caster spell. Why is it making us go to that third spot when we click on Z? Yeah. Ah, okay. So you only have certain... Ah, so this is the first slot. So there's only certain ones you can do. Let's go for dumb. Can we do dumb? No. D O Z. What does slowness? Let's go for slowness. See what it does. You cast the spell on the shape at the shaping grass. It begins its slow approach. So a creature of some kind, but it's still coming for you. The moving grass is barely three strides away from you now. The hissing of the grass gets louder now, almost too loud. Let's get my sword out. Oh, it's a big snake. Lovely. Okay. You draw your sword, your heart is hammering your chest. Then the break in the grass is upon you. You see what's made, an enormous serpent. It's the body of thickness of two broad men, its eyes still... Okay, that can't be good. The serpent rears up out the grass and bears its... So, fight! Okay. We're fighting a snake. Okay, ready? With sword in hand to take it on. The serpent looks dizzy, dazed and weak. Let's go for a full attack. Yes! Minus four. We took it big time. Good stuff. The serpent's coils are winding up slowly around your feet. In a moment they will tighten and snap your ankles. You swing it wildly, hoping to chop it in two as it launches forward. Okay. The creature is suffering. It can barely hold up its neck. Let's defend. Yeah, that's fine. You drop a crouch. The serpent looks shakily through the grass, but you repel it with your blade. You escape unshaved. It's not got a lot of stamina here, so let's just go for it and let's just take it out. Yeah, you're done. You're done, mate. Good.
You wait as the serpent shifts, carelessly exposing its belly, and then you attack. You cleave the air with your sword. With a great cloud of dust, the head of the serpent crashes to the ground, and the light in its eyes goes forever dark. Sweet, one stamina lost. Skilled sword play. Let's continue. Okay, let's search the snake. There is only one way to search the body. With your sword, you split it open, cutting through its long stomach. It's filthy work, but not unrewarding. For from the belly of the beast, an arm bone, with a skeletal hand attached, and in the grip of the hand is a small bag of coins. Take the cash. You lift the gold from the palm, then snatch your hand back quickly. You have been burned by the stomach acid. Okay. That is soaked through the leather of the bag. Take the coins. Most carefully this time, you knock the coins free from the bag at the tip of your sword. Sparing a little of your water, you can wash them clean and slip the coins into your purse. And that is long enough pause. You leave the serpent for the crows, make your way forward through the lengthening grass, wiping your sword as you go. Nice. First victory. So we have to go straight through the long grass. Well, what is this elk thing? What is, I wonder what that is. I don't know what that does. Let's head to your next part. You head onwards into the long grass, which gets taller and taller. The ground seems to slip away, but the plants are just as tall. Soon you can no longer see the wall above the nodding stems. A few paces later, you cannot see the way ahead at all. Let's keep going. There's no turning back. Okay. Grass cannot hurt you. You push onwards, but which way? Cast a spell. Let's see if we can cast a spell that helps us see. Right, what have we got here? We've got... Right, we need to check out what spells we have. Let's go into the spell book and see if there's anything that helps us see. Uh, hot Fireball Law. Nope. Mm -hmm. Fourth done law big. When the spells cast their body, it will inflate the body three times normal. Well, we've got to cast big. Let's cast big. If we can, that'd be awesome. Um, cast a spell. Please tell me we've got a B in the first in the first slot. Please, yes. B, give me an I. Was is that an I? G, yes, big. Cast that. Cast a spell and quickly grow in size until you're three times the normal height and tower above the grass. From here it's easy to see which way to go. You should take the level way and follow the curve of the hill to the river bank. Cool. Follow the level ground. Next, sticking to level ground, you stride quickly along the edge of the hill until you quickly emerge onto a path. Just as you do so, the spell begins to wear off and you shrink back to normal size. Very coincidental and very handy. So now we go back onto the path. That was a nice little detour. And we made it right. Night has fallen. And it's too dark to make out beyond the sparkle of the river. And the glittering of what looks like a bonfire up ahead. Okay, there may be people here, so let's let's go for the bonfire. Striding forward, you approach the bonfire, passing low huts on either side. Whatever this place is, is as silent as a graveyard, and cold and lonely, but for the brazier at its centre. Okay, you go over the bonfire, enjoying the warmth, but as you get closer, you begin to feel terribly tired. It is no time to eat or even play, lay out your pillow roll before you fall. Okay, that's not good. Uh, into the village? Okay, you wait groggily. Where are you? How did you get here? Slowly the memory returns. You get to your feet. You are surrounded by huts, but the village appears deserted. Still halfway between the sleeping and awake, you feel the presence of your spirit, the elk. Ah, that's what that is. That's the spirit. Okay. Close nearby. Its form has changed since you left Analand, just as you have changed, but it is still walking beside you. In the temple they taught you that a prayer to your spirit could heal disease, lift curses, even save you for certain death, but the spirits are not generous and decline to help you often. Okay, we need to call out to help then. You call out loudly. Hello? Is there anybody there? Nothing stirs. The fire crackles and licks at its logs. 
emitting plenty of smoke. But smoke means the logs are still wet even. Let's look into the fire. You go over to the brazier, but it seems quite ordinary. Then you notice it burns with a gentle blue flame. A moment later, you're feeling dizzy. The fume's okay. Okay, that is not good. Let's go to there. You're tied up on the floor of a hut. You're not alone. Nearby, you hear the scuffle of many feet. Let's have a little look around and see what's all going about. You flip your eyes open. Taking care to lie still, you see your belongings lying a short distance away in the dirt. Around you patter tiny feet, and a few more feet hover a few inches in the air above the ground. Wait. <laughs> oh, wait. The guard, noticing you are awake, leans out of the doorway and, s and calls sharply. Soon I saw a small crowd has gathered around you. What the crap are these dudes? One of the group, some kind of leader, steps forward. Traveller, he declares. Let me introduce myself. I am the chief of our little tribe. We are elven, aren't the elves? He performs a mocking bow. Bow, bow. We are creatures of pleasure and enjoyment. It is such a great pleasure to have a visitor in a poor hamlet. So I will ask you, well, you need to untie me before I can do anything, chief. Eh, uh, will I kill them all? Yeah. <laughs> I will kill you all. <laughs> the elven, to your surprise, laugh. That would not be very entertaining, replies the leader, floating a little away above you, except we might enjoy watching you die as you tried. Hmm. With a gesture to his fellows, three more approach. You ready yourself for blows, but instead they open your pack... The elven root through your things with brutal efficiency, taking what they fancy and tossing the rest back at you. They then pick you up and carry you at the village, leaving you in a pile. Let's see the path. Okay. Get up. But your legs are still tied. You topple to your knees. The elven, turning at the sound, laugh loudly, almost as an afterthought. One returns with a bared knife. For a moment he holds it near your throat then slices the bonds around your arms, and then he turns and runs off and get up. You stand slowly, battered and humiliated. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> you rub the blood back into your wrists. Then finally you look through your pack. Your provisions have been taken and stolen on the gold. Then dirty, dirty... See the elves? Still, there are small mercies. You still have your neck. Shouldering your pack, you start to walk once more. Damn it! That was not good. I just lost everything. Huh. Oh well, guys. On that note, I think I'm going to call an episode. But I, this is getting quite interesting. The story is really, really quite detailed. And I'm actually really enjoying this. I just lost everything. Which sucks a bit. But, hey. That's the way the cookie crumbles, I suppose. But anyway, guys, I'm going to call it an episode. So if you have enjoyed it, remember to leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll spread the word, tell your friends, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.